Hey guys, and welcome back to another Let's Learn Kerbal Space program. My name is Silverlink, and I'll be your guide today. It's a big one today. We're going to be landing on the moon finally. So we're going to have a multi-stage rocket. It's going to get us to the moon. We're going to land and return home all in one foul swoop. So I hope you guys will follow along and accomplish the mission along with us. So first things first, let's take a look at mission control. Let's take a look at the two ones that we have here. So the first mission is one small step where we were time to prove the moon is not made of spicy space cheese. We have to land on the surface of the moon. It's gonna get us 300 science. We also have first dibs. Maxo Construction Toys wants to make an action figure of a Kerbal holding a KSC flag. Their creative director, Francois, said, I won't accept anything short of the real thing. Would you land on Amar, one of the moon's smooth, dark lowlands, and plant a flag? We need reference pictures. So we're going to get 100 science for this one to land in a specific area of the moon. So we're going to try taking these ones on at the same time. Uh, basically, we're going to land on the moon in Amar. We're going to take back off and return back to the planet Kerbin. So let's head over to the vehicle assembly bay by clicking on the VAB icon in the bottom right hand corner. This is going to take us to our assembly plant where we're going to start putting together our rocket. And we're going to start off the same way as always with a Mark 1 tin can followed by a parachute so that we have a way to land here. Uh, after the Mark 1 we're going to put on a thermal heat shield so that we can return home safely without our rocket burning up and we're going to add a decoupler same thing that we've done for pretty well all of our other rocket builds so far uh, so this should be pretty pretty standard for you guys so far next thing we're going to do is we want to collect some science along the way so we're going to attach on the science junior uh, this is going to let us collect some science as we go, uh, hopefully on the moon while we're orbiting the moon, just so that we can collect a little bit more than, than we would normally get just for completing the missions. Underneath here, we're going to attach our fuel tanks. This time we're going to use an FLT-400 and an FLT-200 fuel tank. These are going to be the, the fuel, two fuel tanks that we're going to use in order to land on the moon, take off, and return home from it. So underneath here, we're going to use a Terrier engine because uh, we're going to be sticking in space for this portion. So that's going to be our Terrier engine, which is our most effective engine. And this is the core of our lander. However, we need a way to actually land safely. So we're going to put on some landing legs. So I'm just going to search for landing here. And we have our landing legs. So we're going to grab these and we're going to attach them in four-way symmetry. You can do that by pressing the X key on your keyboard a few times or by clicking on the icon down in the center here for symmetry mode. We're going to put on four landing legs and we're going to right click the landing legs and we're going to go leg extended. We want to make sure that our legs are below our engine point, that they're the lowest point on here. So they're not quite there, so we're going to click on the rotate and translate tool down in the bottom center here. We're going to click on one of our landing legs and we're going to drop it down a couple of pegs just so that our landing legs are the lowest point and that's what's actually going to make contact with the moon instead of our engine. Now, because this is going to be a longer term engine, we're going to add on some electrical pieces this time. Uh, we're going to attach on a few batteries. I'm going to leave these in four way symmetry mode. So we're going to attach on four batteries here. And we're also going to attach on some solar arrays. I'm going to put on six just so that no matter which way we're facing, we'll always get some sunlight so that we can continue charging up our our batteries and our electrical energy here uh, and we're going to retract our legs again because we don't want those extended when we are actually flying here so this is going to be our lander this is going to be our return home probe now we need to build our transfer stage so we're going to strap on another stack decoupler at the bottom here just so that we can get our stage separation ready and we are going to attach a few fuel tanks. Uh, this time we're going to use an FLT-800 Methalox fuel tank here. And we're going to use another Terrier engine underneath. This is going to be our transfer stage. So once we're in orbit, this is going to get us from Kerbin to the moon. Um, and it's a pretty standard stage there. Something that we used before 
uh, for our previous video where we went to the moon and back. So it's essentially the same thing that we're building out here. Uh, then we will strap on another decoupler at the bottom and we're going to build our launch stage. This time we're going to use three FLT-800s. We're going to put these on the bottom here. And we're going to use our good old trusty swivel engine so that we have the gimbaling. And we can effectively steer our way through. So this is this is the core of our rocket. However, if we take a look at the engineer's report, our thrust to weight ratio is only 0.268. So it's far, far too low for us to get into orbit. So we need to build something bigger. Uh, previously, we used some solid fuel boosters in order to get us some quick energy, but that's not going to cut it this time. This time we're going to need to use some liquid core engines once again. So we're going to stack on a couple of radial decouplers. I'm going to use the extended radial decoupler this time, and we're going to put this on in two-way symmetry mode. I'm using these radial decouplers uh, because they decouple a little bit better than or the stack separators because they will separate a little bit more effectively than our radial decouplers do. It's just going to decouple it a little bit further out. So on the side here, we're going to attach on a few fuel tanks. We're going to go with the FLT 800s again, and we're going to go with three of these. And we're going to strap on a couple of Reliant engines on the bottom here. We're using our Reliant engines on the side because we already have some gimbling through our, our middle stage here. Uh, and these Reliant engines give us a little bit more thrust uh, off our initial launch. So we're going to strap on some aerodynamic nose cones just to make things a little bit more effective. And we're going to rotate and translate these a little bit just to make these line up a little bit nicer. So we're going to start with our engine. We're going to move this up here. And we want these two to be just a little bit lower than our middle engine so that we can kind of rest on them. And this should get us, this should put us in good shape. This should be everything that we need in order to build our rocket out. You can add some struts if you want, some structural struts, um, just to add a little bit of stability. But those are a little bit, un they're not completely necessary at this point. So taking a look here, we still have, we're still too low on our thrust to weight ratio. We have 0.804. However, I think that is a bit of a mess up I, because I believe we should have enough thrust in order to launch off. So let's go ahead and test, let's take a look at, oh, our problem is our staging. That's our issue. So right now we're only firing our secondary engines. We wanna fire all three at once. So we'll get those staged together. Then we have our radial decouplers along the side. I can clear out this empty stage here. Uh, then we're gonna go with our stack, decou or our, uh, yeah, our stack decoupler here. Then it's our first Terrier engine for our transfer stage. We have our next decoupler, our last Terrier engine for our landing and return stage. We have our final decoupler here in order to get our command pod home. And then we've got our parachute in order to land safely. Now, if we take a look at our engineer's report, we have a thrust to weight ratio of 1.145. So it's just enough to get us to launch here and we should be in good shape. So if you're following along, this should be a good enough rocket in order to get us there, land and return home. If you guys are building your own, uh, just remember to check your engineer's report to make sure you have enough thrust to weight ratio. It is giving us a warning about missing RCS. We're not doing any docking, so we don't really need the RCS right now and we can just ignore that warning. That's only important if we're gonna do some docking. So let's go ahead and hit our launch. And this is gonna be a standard launch. We've done this a few times before. Uh, so there's gonna be nothing really new here. Uh, we're just going to launch. We're going to follow our same launch parameters in order to get into orbit. And let's start our countdown. So once again, we're going to start our launch between five and 1500 meters is when we're gonna start our pitch to the 95 degree marker. At the 10 kilometer marker, we want to be about 45 degrees. And then at the 25 to, uh, kilometer marker, we want to be roughly at 35 degrees. And we'll keep pitching over in order to get this complete. So we have a bit of a slow start here. That's okay. We, hit, we had just enough thrust to weight ratio in order to get launched, but that was enough in order to get us up here. 
So we're just gonna let our, our altitude climb up till we hit the 500 meter mark and then we'll start our tilt over. And I'm gonna leave it a little bit past 500. I'm gonna go around 750 just because I wanna build up a little bit more speed. Uh, just to get a little bit more speed here before we start turning. So I'm gonna start tilting over now. And we're just gonna keep tilting nice and slow. We're gonna keep tapping the D key, nice and easy. And we're gonna be targeting the 10 kilometer marker once again. And at that 10 kilometer marker, we wanna be about 45 degrees. So I'm pitching over a little bit quickly right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ease off on my pitch overs right now. We still have lots of fuel to go here and we're starting to pick up more and more speed, which is good. We're at the five kilometer marker, six kilometer marker. So I'm gonna start pitching over a little bit again, 7K and we're starting to increase our speed now. So we're starting to gain altitude a little bit quicker. So here we go, we're at the nine kilometer marker and we're approaching 45 degrees, which is pretty good. I'm gonna tilt over a little bit quicker because we hit the 10 kilometer marker and I'm not quite at 45 degrees. So I'm gonna pitch over a little bit faster here just so we can get to that 45 degree marker. This was not a great launch, but that's okay. We should still have enough fuel in order to get us where we need to go. Uh, I'm just going to aim for our next marker at 25 kilometers to be at the 35 degree marker. Which we should be in good shape for here. I'm going to keep pitching over. We're about at 40 degrees. There we go. We're, we're just at the 45, 40 degree marker at 25 kilometers. So I can pitch over a little bit quicker. And we're just gonna gradually end up going sideways now. So pretty standard stuff here. This is the same thing we've done a few times. Hopefully you guys have had some orbit practice. We're gonna decouple our stages now. And we're gonna start aiming over sideways. Now I have an apoapsis of 92 kilometers, so I'm gonna cut my engines here and we're gonna make a maneuver node by clicking on our apoapsis marker, creating a maneuver plan. And we're gonna stretch this out till we get into a full circular orbit here. We're gonna stretch out our prograde marker. Same thing we've done before. No real change here. What's happening? All right, looks like we just had a little bit of a, of a visual glitch there. So we're gonna pull this out once again. Apoapsis of 153, periapsis of 66. I'm gonna pull our marker a little bit early. There we go. So we have a periapsis of 85 and an apoapsis of 129. That's good enough to get into orbit here. So I'm gonna go line up with our target using our SAS control at the bottom here. We're just gonna click on our target icon. We're gonna gradually get lined up and we're going to time ahead a little bit to get to our to get to our burn point. So we're going to burn in 10 seconds. I can start burning now. There we go. And we're nice and lined up. So we're just going to check our actuals here, our actual orbital trajectory. We're about to run out of fuel. So we're going to move to our next stage in a few seconds here. And we'll be moving into our orbital transfer stage, which is gonna get us to the moon. So there we go, we're out of fuel. We're gonna stage, we're gonna burn our Terrier engine. You can see we're in our next stage here. We're just gonna keep burning. We're gonna be burning for about a minute, this says. So we're gonna let this continue on. We're gonna keep pushing our way out. Again, nothing special here. This is stuff that we've all done before. And we should be in good shape. So I'm gonna let this time ahead just a little bit, uh, just so that we don't have to watch this push out super slowly.
Okay, there we go. Uh, we have a periapsis of 86 kilometers and an apoapsis of 99 kilometers, so that puts us in good shape. We still have about half our fuel left, so we've now achieved orbit. Congratulations, guys. We've done this a few times. Hopefully, you're in orbit with me and you still have a bunch of fuel left. So what we want to do to get to the moon is we're going to go down to a... We're going to scroll to a top-down view of the planets in the moon. We're going to right-click the moon and we're going to set the target. Now, we want the moon to be directly to the right of our planet. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to burn directly up at 90 degrees. So we're going to go, we're going to create a maneuver plan. We're going to pull out our apple, our apple apses. We're going to push prograde. And we're going to move this out till we can reach the moon here. Keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Slow this down. All right. Now we want to get a lunar encounter. So we're going to move this around a little bit. There we go. We now have a lunar encounter. We have a periapsis of the moon around 70k. So what, what I did there was I just um, I just moved my maneuver node slightly until I got a line that showed up in my target area. And once we had a target there, I could do some fine adjustments in order to get a decent periapsis. So right now we're, we're all clear. We've got a good trajectory. We're ready to go. We're going to be burning in a half an hour, so we're going to warp ahead to our maneuver plan. This is going to take us around the planet. And then we're going to line up with our target once again. And we'll get ready to make our burn. Now, we should have enough fuel to get us to the moon, which is good. This means we should be able to get into orbit, which is going to be nice. Uh, hopefully on this same fuel tank. So here we go. We've got to burn in 45 seconds. We're going to be burning for two minutes. So I'm going to time ahead for this part here. Uh, just so that we don't have to watch it for a full two minutes uh, when we go burn. So just keep an eye for what we're doing here. Uh, it's going to be pretty standard. We're going to wait for that 30 seconds. And then we're going to first let's line up with our target by clicking on our target icon once again. This is going to line us up just about prograde. And by the time we get to our marker, they should be just about lined up with each other. So I'm going to push out until I start getting close to our moon injection orbit here. And then I'm going to slow down my thrust just so that I have a little bit more control and a little bit of a finer movement in order to get to, get to our desired orbital inclination. So we're going to be burning in three, two, one, and we'll start our burn. And I'm just going to warp ahead for this point. We're just going to warp our time ahead here in the video. Okay, and we're starting to get close now, so I'm going to reduce my thrust a little bit just so I don't overshoot. I'm going to go just a little bit of thrust here. And we're going to see our actual line show up uh, in our target area, in the moon's sphere of influence. So once we see that, there we go. Once we see that, we're going to get this lined up. So our periapsis is 332. I'm going to do some fine adjustments here. There we go. 60 kilometers. That puts us in good shape. So we're going to clear our waypoint now. And now we've made our way to the where we've got uh, a moon injection orbit. So we're going to be getting close to the moon. So now what we need to do is we want to warp ahead so that we get into the moon sphere of influence. So let's go ahead and warp ahead. Okay, and we've now entered the moon sphere of influence so we can create a new maneuver node at the moon here. And we're going to burn retrograde in order to bring our orbit back in. I'm going to pull our orbit down so that we can get into a circular orbit around the moon. Mm. 
Moon Apple Apsis of 74k and a Peri Apsis of 59k. That puts us in good shape. That's going to get us a nice circular orbit. So we've got a 29 second burn. This is going to take us into our last stage. Uh, so let's warp ahead to our maneuver point. And once again, we'll get lined up with our target. By clicking on the target icon. Here's our moon. All right, and I should be close enough here that I can actually start the burn at any point. So I'm gonna start burning now. We're already lined up with our retrograde marker according to our nav ball. So we're just gonna start our burn here. We're gonna bring our orbit in. Okay, and I'm out of fuel, so I'm gonna stage my last stage here. Here we go, we're gonna slow down our burn a little bit. Watch our apoapsis and our periapsis. All right, and there we go. We've got a nice circular orbit around the moon. So next thing we need to do is we need to choose our landing point. Now we're gonna be aiming for a Mar and we wanna get uh, get something during daytime, during light on the moon, so that we can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, so... Now, we, we are on a bit of an inclined orbit, which is a little unfortunate here. And it doesn't look like our orbit is really... going over a Mar at any point. Now, maybe on the dark side, but we just can't see that yet. So let's go ahead and let's just orbit the moon a little bit. There is a small patch here that we can aim for. It would be nice to get this big patch here, though. I think we're going to have to aim for this small patch. Oh, we do have another small patch right down here. Perfect. So right now we're just looking for a spot to land. And we want to land in a Mar. So I think we'll aim for this patch right here. This one that we're kind of looking at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down. We're going to create a maneuver plan a little bit further back. And we're going to burn retrograde in order to bring our orbit down. We want to get our orbit to line up with a Mar. And I'm also going to move our radial markers so that we aim down a little bit. And that should put us in good shape. So let's line up with our target. And let's warp to our maneuver plan. And we're going to F5 to save. We're going to do a quick save here. And then I'm going to start burning. I'm going to start burning slowly here. And we're just going to wait for our line to line up here. There we go. That gets us into the Mar. So let's delete our maneuver node. And right now we are set to land inside this moon lowlands here. Now, the reason why I'm going towards the edge is we're going to be gradually slowing down, which is going to pull us inward a little bit more. Um, and so it's just giving us a little bit of wiggle room. So when we're landing on the moon, there's two things to take it. There's two pieces of information to take into account. And that is the direction that you're facing. We have two sets of momentum. One is our vertical momentum, so how much we are dropping down towards the moon, and our horizontal momentum, which is how much we're moving side to side. We need to cancel both of these out in order to land safely on the moon. So in order to do that, you can just burn retrograde in order to get them to burn at the, to, to decrease them at the same time or you can fire kind of horizontally and then fire vertically 
Uh, it's really up to you. I'm going to be burning retrograde for most of this. And actually, chat, we've got to collect some science. I haven't been collecting enough science here. Here we go. So we've got a bunch of science to collect. We're going to get some more as we land on the moon. So let's do an EVA. So we're going to aim straight up here. Oh, we're going to turn off our SAS. All right, and then let's EVA. Let's run a crew observation. Oh, invalid research. So we have to physically detach here. So we're going to detach. We're going to turn on our RCS thrusters, and then we'll run another crew observation. All right, we already have something in storage for this location, it looks like. So it looks like it counted. So let's go ahead and re-grab. Let's board our vessel. Perfect. Now let's go turn our SAS back on and let's line up retrograde. We can close out our science window here. Now as it stands, we're going to be landing in the Mars. So I want to let us get a little bit closer here. Because we only have 500 meters per second to shed. So it's not that much that we need to shed off. So we're going to let ourselves get kind of close to the moon here. All right, we're going to get lined back up retrograde. I'm also going to extend our landing gear. You can do that in the left-hand side here. There's the option for gear. And I'm just going to start burning retrograde. You can see the mar below us. This is where we want to be landing. So burning retrograde is canceling out both our horizontal and vertical momentum. And by continuing to burn retrograde, uh, we'll continue to, to shed enough speed here. So I'm going to get down to about 100 meters per second. Actually, I'm going to let myself get a little bit closer to the ground because we still have 17 kilometers to go. And I only have 250 meters per second to shed now. So we're going to get a little bit closer to the planet. We're going to speed up here. We're going to burn some more. And our goal is to land at 8 meters per second or less. That's that's the magic number that we're aiming for here. So we want to get our surface speed down to 8 meters per second. And we just want to kind of keep it there. So I'm, I've dropped enough here that I can let myself fall down. And you can see... We're now about halfway through the Mars, so that's why we gave ourselves some wiggle room, because we were going to be cancelling out a lot of our horizontal momentum. You can see the moon coming up below us here. I'm going to speed time ahead a little bit. I'm going to start shedding some more speed, because we're going a little bit quick. And we're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. Let's slow down some more. Coming in for a landing at 6 meters per second. Slowing down a little bit more. There we go. And we've landed. And we've landed on a Mars. Good job, guys. I hope you were able to follow along with this. So now that we've landed on the moon, we're going to make sure our engines are killed. We've got 941 Delta V left, which should be enough to get back. You're going to need a minimum of 500 um, in order to get home. So let's go on an EVA. We're going to drop down here. All right, we're going to do a little EVA. Let's go collect our surface sample and a crew survey. And we will, of course, plant a flag to commemorate our first moon landing. Let's let these run through. Perfect. Let's run our crew observation. And we'll also run a Science Junior report now that we've landed on Amar. All right, perfect. We have over. We have almost 300 science, a little over 300 science, actually, that we're going to be bringing home. So let's run out here. Let's plant a flag. Let's see if we can see Kerbin from here, too. 
Doesn't look like we can see the planet Kerbin, unfortunately. So let's plant a flag. Moon landing. Let's call it first moon landing. First time landing on the moon. There we go. And that gives us a couple missions completed. So that's all we needed to do here. If you guys want, you can do some exploring around, check out the moon, take a look at some moon rocks. We landed far enough into a Mar that there's, we're not gonna be able to hit another biome, which is fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our RCS thrusters and we're gonna hit shift in order to, we're gonna get lined up with the front of our panel here. And we're going to get hit shift in order to get launched up. Then we can grab on and we can reboard. So let's run our science junior. We now have 208 surface samples and 216 points of data. So we've got just over 400 science that we're going to be bringing home, which is pretty danged sweet. All right, now for getting home, what we want to do is we want to get ourselves lined up with the 90 degree marker once again. Um, and that's that's going to get us where we need to go in order to get us back into orbit. So we're going to hit shift in order to start taking off. And we're going to basically head straight sideways almost. Just enough to get over any mountains. Get our engines going here. and We're going to head straight, si almost straight sideways. And we're just going to watch our apoapsis, and we're going to let that get up to about 20k. And then we will circularize our orbit. And we'll get home. Actually, what we'll do is we're going to try heading home directly from here. So what we want to do is we want to get onto the inside of the moon. And then we're going to burn retrograde from there. Create a maneuver plan. Whoops, sorry. I meant we're going to burn prograde, not retrograde. And this gets us back to Kerbin. We're going to check our Kerbin periapsis. And we want to get that within 35 kilometers again. At least under 70. There we go. We're going to use three. We're going to use basically all of our fuel here. So this is going to be a close one. So we're going to be burning in 25 minutes. So let's warp to our maneuver node. We're going to get lined up with our target. We're going to bring our landing gear back in. And then we're going to start burning. Now I can burn pretty well at any point here, so I'm just going to start burning now. And this was the same thing that we did when we just visited the moon before, so nothing's really changing here. All right, we're coming for a hot landing straight into Kerbin. Which is fine. That's going to be okay. We've got our heat shield, so we've got enough to protect us here. So at this point, I can even detach my last stage and we can go in for our landing. So let's head back to our vessel here. We're going to warp ahead. We're going to get back to the planet Kerbin. All right, let's warp ahead. Let's go ahead and detach our last stage. We'll line up retrograde to get our heat shield nice and protected here. And then we're gonna come in for a landing. We're going to be coming in a little bit hot here, but that's okay. We should we should be able to shed enough speed that we're going to get home safe. 
I'm going to wait till our flames disappear, and then we're going to deploy our parachute. All right, flames have disappeared. I'm going to let my surface speed come down a little bit more. We're coming in a little bit fast. We'll get to 500 meters per second. There we go, and we'll deploy our chute. We can time lapse ahead. Let our chute deploy out. And come on home for a safe landing. And so that's it, guys. Congratulations. We went to the moon. We came home. It was a little bit tight, but we managed to make it happen. Hopefully, you guys will have a better launch than I did, and you can save a little bit of fuel. I think my launch was the big thing that I messed up on. And there we go. We've landed safe and sound. We've got a new biome. So we're going to collect some science here. And then let's go and recover. Actually, let's uh, do an EVA as well. Run some more science from the Highlands. And there we go. Let's return home. Grab on. Let's board. And we are going to recover our vessel. Head back to the Kerbal Space Center. And let's go check our missions. So one small step is complete. We've proved that the moon is not made of spicy space cheese. Let's hit the submit button. We landed on the moon. We did it. You did it. With this achievement, the entire Kerbaler system is ours to explore. We're getting some next level science from the crew observations and the head of the snack department finally left. They didn't even blink. Newton had to keep spritzing their eyes. The moon, definitely not edible. All in all, I'm glad the cheese thing is behind us. I hope the snacks department can recover from this setback. Who knows? Maybe they can pivot to rock candy. Hit. <laughs> this calls for a celebration. Macchiatos for everyone. And there we go. We landed on the moon. We're going to hit our nice thanks science button. Collect our science. And then let's hand in first dibs. Um, we planted a flag within the Mar on the moon. We've collected 100 science. Let's submit. Great work. Maxo Construction said the live feed was deemed acceptable by Francois, which is the highest praise. They clearly think a lot of themselves. His note said, congrats on becoming relevant. We're the first space program on Kerbin. I swear some manufacturers are never satisfied. Let's try and stay on good terms, though. I heard there's a possibility for another toy line in the near future. Once again, we'll click our thanks science button we'll thank our science and collect some more we've got three new missions here there's the mooner signal mission control has picked up a mysterious signal that seemed to be originating from a fixed point on the moon surface we need you to investigate so we have to land on a specific spot on the moon this time we also have one for escaping Kerbin, where we have to escape Kerbin's gravitational sphere of influence so basically we're going to start orbiting the sun and a lonely satellite where we orbit Kerbin with a probe core, antenna, and solar panel. So these two should be pretty simple. Definitely try them on your own. We'll do some videos for them though. So be sure to check those out. It's going to be pretty nice. Uh, let's head to the R&D center because we've got over a thousand science now that we can spend. Uh, so let's go ahead and unlock our medium orbital rockets. And the, really the big one that I want here is fuel lines. That's going to be huge for us. Uh, and that's going to help us build some way more efficient rockets. So those are the two I want to unlock right now. And those are the main ones that I want to grab. That's going to help us with our next few missions. So that's it, guys. That is everything for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all next time. Bye for now.